What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna learn how to use the rotate tool in SketchUp, not only to rotate objects, but to do some other powerful things. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the rotate tool in SketchUp is actually pretty powerful, um, but it can be a little bit confusing if you're just getting started with it. And so you can find the rotate tool over here in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the page. Notice how it ha has a hotkey of Q in order to activate it. And so say that we were to take the rotate tool and we wanted to rotate this box. So say we wanted to turn it. Um, 45 degrees. So what we would do is we would probably use the rotate function in order to do this. And so the way this tool works is you select the tool and usually it's a good idea before you select the tool to select the object that you want to rotate. So in this situation, I'm gonna click and drag across this box right here, making sure that I pick up all of the geometry. And so what you would do at this point to rotate this object is you would activate the tool. Um, usually by tapping the Q key on your keyboard. And so notice how when you do that, you get this little protractory looking thing um, that pops up on your screen. And you might've noticed if you mouse over things, it faces different directions depending on what you mouse over. So this is giving you the ability to set the direction that an object is rotated. And so that's probably the first thing I want you to know is you can mouse over an object and then you can hold the shift key in order to lock a directional inference like this. Um, so if you wanted to rotate in this direction based on this face, notice how you can do that by mousing over it and then holding the shift key. But one of the more powerful ways to do this is to actually tap the up, left, or right arrow keys in order to lock the rotation plane to a certain direction. So in this situation, I would wanna lock this to the up direction. So I would tap the up arrow key right here. And so when I do that, notice what's gonna happen is it's gonna lock it to this blue direction and then I can set a base point. And so the base point is the central point from which your object is going to be rotated. So in this case, I want the base point of my rotation to be this corner right here. So I'm going to single click, move my mouse and notice how it asks me to create another Point. and the protractor is just gonna kind of rotate around. So I've set the base point and now I'm gonna pick a reference point for the start of my rotation. Well, in this situation, that reference point is going to be right here. And what I can do is I can click again and then notice how I can move my mouse and it's going to rotate this object based on that central point and the reference point. And notice how in the lower right-hand corner, this is showing me different angles right? So I can actually set an angle either by clicking or by typing in a value. So in this situation, if I typed in a value of 45 and hit the enter key, notice how this object gets rotated 45 degrees based on that reference point. Now, let's say that we wanted to rotate this object in a vertical direction. Now, the orientation of the object has been changed so that it no longer matches the model axis location. That's okay because what we can do is we can mouse over this face right here and we can actually use inferencing just by mousing over these two midpoints in order to find the center of the surface right here. So in this case I can actually just hold the shift key to lock this inference and then click and what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to set the center of this object as the base for my rotation. Well, notice how now, if I rotate this object, it's doing the same thing. It's rotating it based on um, the base point, the target point, and then the target location. And so I could do the same thing again by tapping the up arrow key, picking this midpoint right here, and then rotating this object whatever direction I want. So in this case, 45 degrees, like this. Now. One of the things that you should know about this is note that you can rotate objects with base points that are off the object. So I've got some chess pieces that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse from Paul A. And we're gonna use these chess pieces as an example. So if I take this chess piece right here and say that I wanna rotate it around a point. So say that I've got just a point in space right here. So we'll just draw an edge. I wanna rotate this around this point but I don't want to have my rotation base point be on this object. Well, if I tap the Q key, notice how I can mouse over this edge, single click, 
and move my mouse in order to set a base point. And I can actually rotate this around that point even though that base point is not on my object. So you can use this to rotate objects along a radius just like this without having to actually be on the object itself. Now let's talk just a little bit about one of my favorite features of this tool, which is the ability to create copies. So the rotate tool also allows you to copy objects, very similar to the move tool. And so the way that that works is you tap the Q key right here, and then you set your base point. So I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock this to um, the flat axis right here. I'm going to pick a point in the 3D space. So we'll say it's this one right here, and I'm going to set this as my base direction. And so right now, this is just rotating this object along the axis. Well, notice if you move your mouse with this active and you tap the control key, this is going to create a copy of an object like this. And so let's say that we wanted this object to be um, along a radius, maybe 35 degrees or something like that. So we're gonna type in a value of 35. Well, notice what that did is that created a copy of an object 35 degrees along an arc right here. Now, this gets even more powerful. I'm gonna erase this out. We're gonna do this again because you can create arrays of copies. So in this case, I'm gonna activate this tool again, tap the control key and type in a value of 35 degrees. Now I've not done anything else, so don't click again. This tool is still active. And so with this tool still active, if you type in either the star or the X key and then a number of copies, so say I typed in a value of five, and hit the enter key, this is actually going to create five copies along that radius in my 3D space. And this is still active because I haven't clicked on anything. So I can type in a new value, so times eight, and hit the enter key, and that's gonna create eight copies right here. I can type in times three, and it's gonna go back to three copies. So as long as this tool is active, you can actually adjust the number of copies that you have in here um, just by typing in times and a new value. So that by itself for creating copies along a radius is super valuable, but there's another function in here which I think what the radius is is probably even more valuable. That's the, abil the ability to create equally spaced copies. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to set a base point, tap control, to create our copies, but in this case, I'm gonna create a copy that's 90 degrees along a radius. So I'm gonna type in a value of 90 and hit the enter key. Well, if you type in a forward slash and a number of copies, so divided by five, this is gonna create five equally spaced copies between those two objects. Um, it's actually four between and then the one you created for five total. But if I typed in divided by eight, it's gonna create eight. If I typed in divided by 16 and hit enter, it's going to create 16. So you can adjust this until you get the number of copies that you're looking for inside of SketchUp. So that allows you to create equally spaced copies along a certain number of degrees inside of the program, which is pretty valuable. All right, so that's a high level overview of the rotate tool. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you learned anything, if there's anything you didn't know about. I just love having that conversation with you guys, or if you have additional questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.